Hello folks, I hope you're all doing well. <sighs> well, I've had a bit of a week of it, shall we say, with, with one thing or another. So I've not got loads done up at the plot this week. Ugh, I mean, endless watering, don't get us wrong, I've been up here watering all that time. We've had one decent downpour of rain in about three weeks, but apart from that, it's been really, really dry, so it's endless watering. But I thought I'd still get up here Sunday morning, Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there, including my dad, who I'll be going to see later on, just after I've been up here and done a few jobs and whatnot. But I thought I'd just give you a bit of a bit of an update on on the polytunnel, what's going on inside the polytunnel, and a bit of an issue that I've had outside with some of the French beans, and a bit of a bit of a bean disaster, shall we say? But let's let's go and have a look at that first, right? Let me let me spin you around here, right? And we'll have a little wander out here, and this. This bit here, you can you can probably already see the sort of disaster that's that's gone on in here, and these were dwarf French beans that I put out probably oh, I don't know two weeks ago maybe, and they looked absolutely brilliant. They looked absolutely grand, and then they all just died just like that. All of them, pretty much all at the same time, went, and I've no idea why. I can only assume that maybe it's overnight, one night or something. It's been a bit cold, and it's been too cold for them. And it's killed them off because of the things in the bed, the, the little marigolds here and there's one random bit of fennel over there have survived no bother and the bed right next to it. We've got the outdoor tomatoes that are absolutely thriving and little marigolds and things there. So it's not as if there's been any anybody's accidentally sprayed weed killer around here from another plot or anything like that. It's just, they've just died and I can only think it's been the cold weather. But if anybody has any ideas what may have caused that, let me know. But I've got some... Some cold rabbi at home, so I'm going to bring the cold rabbi. I'm going to plant that out in here in this bed, but I'll put a cover on it and things like that. But that's a bit, just a little bit of a disaster. See, see, not everything goes according to plan all the time. But I thought what we do today, while I'm here, instead of the doom and gloom of that bed out there and what's happened, let's just have a little bit of a much about inside the polytunnel and see how things are looking in here. Because it's it's not too bad. There's maybe one little minor issue, but I'll, I'll, I'll come to that. But everything's not looking too bad. So let me, let me spin you around and we'll see how things are looking. So first of all, just inside here, on the left hand side, let me, I'm just closing the door behind me there just to, to stop the wind and whatnot coming through. These are the King of the North Peppers and there you can see they're going great guns, beautiful healthy plants. We are just starting to get the buds on them here. So it won't be too long before we see the, the flowers form and hopefully some, some peppers not too long after that with a bit of luck. And then we move on to what's turning into a little bit of a sort of tomato jungle over here. And I've, I've been given the tomatoes, I've, see I've not had loads of time up here recently, but I've been trying to give them a little bit of TLC sort of trying to get in and about and get the get the suckers out you know the little the little stems that sort of come off in between where the truss comes out and where the main leader is so we've been pulling them out and i've only just started if i come down to the bottom of this one if i've started trimming the leaves up here i'll probably take them up a little bit further i think in the next week or two and I've trimmed the bottom leaves off for a couple of reasons. One is it helps aid airflow. So you can see there's loads and loads of leaves down here. There's not going to be a lot of air getting through there, through the back, between all those tomato plants. And the other thing is, is to try and stop splashing water up onto the leaves to obviously reduce that chance of blight. So when I'm watering down here, especially when I'm feeding, when I feed into the sort of the main uh, ring, bit of, the, bit of the pot there, the water can splash up and go over the leaves and things like that, and I want to try and avoid that. So again, they'll, they'll probably get taken quite far up, almost up to where I can see the first flowering truss on these plants. Speaking of flowering trusses and things like that, you can see the tomatoes. These ones are the, um, oh, Craigie, hold on. Let me, let me find the label for you. Here we go. The Large Barred Boar, which are the ones we got from Baker Creek Seeds in America. Now, if we look over here, there is a couple of these growing, and if I move that out of the way, it's looking like an absolute beauty, and then it's got a lovely sort of striped pattern on it, and I think when they ripen, it goes like a dark red colour with lovely green stripes on it, and there's another one hiding down there, so there's, there's not millions of tomatoes on them yet, but the ones that are on are looking pretty good, so hopefully we'll start to get some more of them soon. And looking at the ones further back here, these ones back here, these are sun gold, a sort of little golden sort of cherry tomato. And you can see again, we're starting to get little tomatoes forming there. So I'm hoping now that they're starting to appear, 
because the cherry tomatoes they won't take very long to grow and ripen and there's a beautiful looking truss I've just spotted that I've never spotted that before and look at that they're gonna look absolutely brilliant when they're done with a bit of luck and last couple of things up this side of the tunnel two aubergine plants and uh, not doing too much at the moment I mean we've got some some flowers on there uh, whether they're being pollinated or not I'm not sure but I'll, I'll, I'll come to that bit in, in in a wee while there and the other one back there is looking pretty much the same if you can see random random juice bottles in here it's because we've got these um these funky sort of drip water and things on so these aubergine plants were really really thirsty when I first put them in because obviously the roots didn't come through deep enough so we couldn't water them through the halos that had coming through the top there so these really really helped out so you fill them full of water you set that little white tap bit there it just sticks in the ground and it just drip 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 into the soil so if i can't get up here when if i'm away for work or something like that if i'm away for sort of two or three days these are absolutely brilliant they were just a few quid off amazon and you just use any sort of any sort of juice or pop bottle that you've got you can see we've got the the good old iron brew bottle back there for for that one and they're, they're absolutely brilliant but I'll, I'll put a link down below in the description if you want to go and have a look at them you see they're, they're not expensive and they, they do a brilliant job and over here is the melon plant that we were we picked it up from plant swap i hadn't planned on planting melon it's grown pretty well to be honest whether there's going to be enough time in the season up here in scotland to to grow a melon when i was late and sort of but now we will see but i will keep feeding it growing it looking after it it's got some flowers on it you can see there's some flowers so there's there's hope for melons yeah you never know we'll we'll see bit of a mess back here just where i store stuff and we'll very quickly move on from that to this chili plant here it just sits in a little pot here by itself at the back and this is called basket of fire and you can see we've got some lovely ripe looking at chilies down there so i think i'll pick that one and take that home and we'll give it a try and speaking of chilies these four plants here these are all chili plants different types these two on the right hand side are habaneros and these two on the left hand side are called chocolate doula and again much like the the sweet peppers very sort of same sort of stage of of growing there you can see we've just got little little buds just starting to appear there so hopefully again not too long before those flower and they come out and get pollinated and more tomatoes over here the tomatoes on this side are very much the same sort of status as the tomatoes on that side and one thing to show you on i think it was this this particular tomato plant here where i managed to was it here yeah so you can see there this was actually the leader that was where the the tomato was growing from and i managed to snap it when i was putting it out because these things happen sometimes but luckily right on this join here you can see this this bit here this was actually a sucker that was growing out from this truss so this sucker now becomes the new leader going up here so luckily this plant has sort of survived where i've managed to break the main stem and it's coming all the way up and speaking of look, look there's one you see you never manage to get them all do you look there's there's one growing there so we'll we'll get rid of that that can go into the compost these tomatoes as well I'll say the again i think the ones at the back are the sun gold ones again and the ones at the front here are crimson crush not a lot going on at the moment we've got a couple of little tomatoes forming there but hopefully again over the next few weeks we'll start to see a lot more going on there cucumbers complete mixed bag on the cucumbers so you'll see these ones here these are mini munch and we've got one two three here ready to pick yeah i'll probably pick that one the thing with the cucumbers this season is i'm trying to pick them a lot earlier than i did last year i think i left them too late they were trying to get them you know big cucumbers wow look at the cucumbers but the the skins got thick the seeds got big and they work great eating but i've picked a couple of these a lot smaller this year and honestly absolutely magic the smaller the cucumber the better in my opinion and the ones back here this is um a cucumber variety called carmen so i've had two of the bigger cucumbers picked off there to never show you. you can see they're they're grown pretty well there's one going down there and i've got a couple up there on the go and they are looking pretty good again just as soon as they were ready to pick they were picked they weren't left too long and the flavor and the texture so 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 much better than than it was uh last year's 
<clears throat> these two cucumber plants here, which are the yard long Armenian cucumbers. Bit of an experiment this year, never done them before. Again, we got them from Baker Creek Seeds in America. They're growing nice and tall and they've got loads of flowers on them and they're looking great. But what we don't have on them is any cucumbers, which is a bit disappointing for a, for a cucumber plant, which is kind of what you want. Although then again, I might, I might have spoken too soon. There might just be one starting to grow there possibly possibly not but let me let me spin you around so that's that's the polytunnel at the moment how it's looking it's looking pretty good things are growing pretty well i'm quite pleased what i have noticed is one slight problem in here and i'd really appreciate people's opinions or help and advice on this i've noticed between the canes between the strings things like that sometimes lots of little spiders and at first i thought that was a great idea spiders in the polytunnel because they'll catch the horrible flies that come in here and buzz about and stuff like that but then i thought are they also going to catch the pollinators and i came in here one day and there was a little hoverfly caught in one of them which i released and off it went so i've been clearing the spiders out so if i've ever found any spiders in the polytunnel i've been getting rid of them because i don't want them making webs all over the place and trapping pollinators am i doing the right thing let me know in the comments if you think i am or not Anyway, I think we're pretty much just about done for the day. See, I've got no time this week. I'm in a mad rush today. I'm just going to get everything watered up because, oh, I mean, it, it probably takes a good, I reckon, half an hour, 45 minutes here to get everything watered up inside the tunnel and out because we're not allowed to use hose pipes because it, it causes problems with the water pressure around and about all the other plots, which is fair enough. So I sort of go around with two watering cans, getting everything done, and it takes it takes ages so i'm gonna go and get on with that job now anyway if you want to see all the other things we're doing loads of stuff going on loads of stuff coming up honestly it's just been a bad bad week there's more stuff coming please think about subscribing it's absolutely free just click the button below it doesn't cost you anything but that is me done for the day i am off to do watering and then enjoy the rest of father's day anyway that's me done thank you very much fortune catch you on the next one bye for now